You shall not call the president despicable. You should not call the president despicable. I can't. He's despicable. He is. That I had to take the break, and I had to just all the way through the break say the word. Did I tell you that I think Obama is despicable? Have I mentioned that before on this show? Whew. All right. Let's move along. Donald Trump. Ooh, wouldn't it be fun to just see him on the debates? You're fired. <laughs> Donald Trump is actually now officially forming an exploratory committee for a run as a Republican for the White House. <clears throat> he has flirted before with runs. This time, this time he says, I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not the boy crying wolf. I'm serious. He's got a business mind. I mean, Romney had a business mind, but Romney was just a squish when it came to the social issues. He caved in in Massachusetts. He helped the baby killers. I never would have trusted Romney as a, as president. We'll never know, but trust me, he, he was not an honorable man when it came to the protection of babies. No Republican, hear me, no Republican can win the nomination and certainly cannot win the White House, but he cannot win the nomination if he's not pro-life. It is a litmus test, okay? The end. If a guy is running for a Republican or the, the nomination for president as a Republican or a woman and he says, I'm pro-choice, he's done. The base will not allow it. Now, the truth of the matter is that this allows for people to play shenanigans. You will remember President Dole and you will remember President McCain and you might remember President Romney. No, you don't. And one of the reasons is because evangelicals stayed home. There were a lot of pro-life social, social conservatives who just stayed home. They didn't vote because Dole and McCain and Romney did not get them fired up. Reagan got people fired up. When George Bush the elder started to wane and the people were like, what, what is going on? Then people stayed home for his re-election bid in 92. George Bush, the younger, was much more open and forceful about his pro-life convictions. And he won in 2004 against Kerry. Bush won again. And the Bush people hammered on Kerry's pro-abortion position. The guys who didn't make it a part of their campaign lost. Why is it that some of the Republican operatives and the moneyed class of the Republican Party, why is it that they're so stupid on this issue? And I'm not trying to be offensive. If you're one of those wealthy guys and you're watching the show right now, I'm not saying that you're inherently unintelligent. But on this particular point of political strategy, you've got to be taking stupid pills by the fistful, okay? Look at the numbers. Look at the history. It's just the way it is. And... We, the pro-life wing, the conservative wing of the Republican Party, we will deny people the nomination and we will deny them the White House by staying home. Well, you'd rather have Obama? I'd rather keep a place where there can be a legitimate force to end the murder of babies. And if we sell our soul to just win the White House, we won't have any home. We won't have a place from which we can actually exert true political power toward the end of making it a crime to kill a human being from conception until birth. Okay? Bring it all the way back to Donald Trump. Well, the reason that I think that Donald Trump is serious this time is because he says he's pro-life. Yes, Donald Trump has had a conversion. He said that it happened with stories that people told him. He had a close friend who found out that his wife was pregnant and the close friend wept because he didn't want to have a baby. Literally wanted his wife to kill the child. And then, thank God, the baby was born and now this little girl is the apple of the daddy's eye. And Donald Trump said, stories like that made me realize that I'm pro-life. And I'm not pro-choice anymore. I have changed my position. All right. It's lip service. 
It's part of the train track that takes you to the Republican nomination. Is he really pro-life? Does that mean he will promise publicly that he will only appoint justices to the Supreme Court who promise ahead of time, litmus test, who promise that they will overturn Roe versus Wade? Hmm? If a bill came to him that banned the killing of children and invoked uh, Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution that said that, that the, the courts, the Supreme Court, may not rule, may not adjudicate on an issue, would he sign it into law? A federal ban on child killing? We've got to get, we've got to get the specifics from Mr. Trump. But he's interested in running because he's had a conversion. Romney went through the same thing, by the way. That's why I'm a little iffy on this. Take a quick break. Talk a little bit, a bit about Emmanuel Rahm and is President Obama a secret Muslim? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. He could be. It looks that way. Oh, which is the answer? <laughs> Do you want to get America out of the hands of wicked and unjust men and women who are destroying the republic before our eyes and put leadership back into the hands of righteous men and women so that we don't die as a nation? Well, you're talking about social revolution and there are rules in social revolution. We can look at the victorious social revolutions of the past, such as the end of slavery, the end of child labor, women's voting rights, the end of segregation, and so much more, and learn from their victories. Look at their actions, their images, their rhetoric, their sacrifices, and their final fruit. We will send you this series that originally cost $129, seven books for students, one teacher's guide, if you'll give a gift of any size and just pay for shipping and handling. Take advantage of it today.